I came to New Urbanism because the human settlement pattern is the intersection of everything else I care about in the world. Um, when you get right down to it, seeing you isn't about fixing our buildings or making our roads more pleasant for non-motorists uh, or lessening the ecological impact um, of, of everything that we do in this world. Seeing you is the brain trust concerned with saving civilization holistically, um, which we're all daily, even myself, um, hostage to actively taking part in the destruction of. Um, additionally, educationally, we grow up and we have our formalized education, which, you know, there's obviously problems with the educational system um, as far as schools go, but a lot of your education comes the same way that learning a language or learning to walk happens. It happens informally um, based on the environment we grow up in. So our grandparents, and even to a degree our parents, grew up in these traditional environments where um, all of their activities explain to them the way the world works, the way that your resources and your economy and your community works together. But when you grow up in a non-functioning community, uh, you don't learn, them, learn those things, and it's very hard to teach them in a formalized place. So additionally, um, by, by rebuilding our communities, uh, we're going to rebuild our society and our economy. So one project that I'd like to talk specifically about um, is the East End of Richmond. Uh, it's a project that was done by DPZ in uh, 2009. And the East End of Richmond is this essentially bombed out neighborhood. It's completely empty, boarded up houses, abandoned vacant lots, very few operating businesses, even the library at that point was shut down. Um, one of the, aside from the few holdouts, um, essentially the only game in town was Bon Secours had a medical facility there. Um, but the, the entire medical facility was inward facing um, and didn't integrate with the neighborhood whatsoever. Uh, everybody who came to the campus um, you know, was afraid of walking through the neighborhood. It was a dangerous place. Um, so when they had to renovate the hospital facilities, they brought in DPZ to see how they could leverage the hospital facilities into trying to uh, revive the neighborhood. Um, and a number of different strategies took place, but one of the most important was turning the hospital facility outward into the neighborhood and taking a lot of the services um, that were being provided for the hospital anyways and integrating them into the, the community. So, for example, hospitals have uh, cafeterias. So instead, uh, putting a cafe, putting a restaurant, putting you know a quick lunch spot, and putting them all at the edges of the hospital, so they can serve both uh, both the hospital, um, the patients, and the doctors, as well as the community. Um, so that's that's definitely one that drastically and very quickly changed the atmosphere of a place um, simply by changing the orientation of the buildings and the businesses um, to its surrounding context. Context being one of the most important things um, that new urbanism considers that other development patterns don't. Um, if you want to learn more about that project, uh, you can go to the DPZ site. It's dpz.com and the project number is uh, 0914. So public space, I think, is a little bit of a misnomer. Um, people say public space, and often you talk about public space, and then pretty quickly you talk about open space, green space, parks. Um, but what is really intended with the phrase public space is public realm. And the public realm is everything between the walls of the buildings. So the public realm is the sidewalks, it's the streets, it's the intersections, it's the parks, it's the plazas, but it's, it's everything between the buildings, between the privately held space is actually the public realm. Um, which is why you have such a fight right now over the streets for, you know, taking them back from just the cars and, and putting the car basically above the human. Um, and, and I think it's so important for new urbanists because new urbanism is really uh, trying to address the experience of living in a, pra a place, uh, the lifestyle of living in a place. You know, you go to Europe and people people love it. It's ideal. Everybody wants to go to Europe for a vacation or Europe for a honeymoon. But they come back home and they say, oh, but that's Europe. We can't have that. Here. But if you look at America's original settlements, um, we have the exact same pattern. So what New Urbanism, what especially Liz and Andres and, and everybody else back in the day were trying to recapture was that sense of place, was that experience of being in a place and, and what it contributes to to your day-to-day -day interactions and, and how you spend your time. So it's really more than public space, it's public realm and right now it's so degraded. There's, there's, it's so hard to find, you know, you're, you're basically going through arterial to parking lot and you're dodging cars to go in the store and the front of the store is, is horrible. There's no hanging out in front of a store and eating a pastry with a, with a friend. Um, it's, it's, it's just kind of a mundane act. So trying to uh, return that to, 
to a more pleasurable thing. If you're going to spend the time and the investment on these things anyways, uh, they should contribute. That's all. It's a really good question, um, and it's a really pertinent one because at this point, most people live in, in some degree of sprawl, and most of our, our resources are currently invested in sprawl and in maintaining sprawl, um, which one is a losing battle. Sprawl is essentially a Ponzi scheme. Um, it cannot support itself tax-wise, um, infrastructure-wise. That's why you see places all over the country going bank bankrupt and being unable to support any, any basic services. Um, so it's not, it's not easy, and you can't, you can't across the board fix it, um, because essentially you have what should be a, a mile square town at the most that's you know set out across 30, 40, 50 square miles um, and, and you can't fix all of that. But what you can do is you can go in and you can identify the key nodes, the major intersections where there's a little bit more density and you can pull in around that. You can take parking lots and you can put in liner buildings and redevelop them, put in a, a tighter street grid um, and you can just kind of decide which places can be fixed and try to intensify around those places. And it's both nodes and corridors, um, but really it's, you know, as I previously mentioned, public realm is where basically all of life takes place, all of the interactions. And so that's what Sprawl is missing, is uh, a useful public realm. Um, if you're talking specifically about green space, for example, you're talking about functional urban space, or, or functional green space. Um, out in Sprawl, you have all of these wide medians, these grassy berms, these, you know, highway interchange with these, these huge clover leaves that are, that are thrown with plants and grasses, but you're not going to take your kid there to play soccer. You're not going to have a picnic with your family there. It's non-functional space that you're paying to maintain. Um, if you can change, in, instead change the configuration uh, and, and put the car below the human instead of above the human, all of a sudden you regain these places um, and, and you regain community. So unfortunately most of Sprawl can't be saved, um, but you can, you can save specific sections of it um, by pulling everything else in around it.